So you're thinking about moving to beautiful Claremont, California. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about five pros and five cons of this beautiful area. Stick around. You're going to want to see all of these pros and cons. So let's just get right into it. Pro number one, the mild climate. As a lot of people know, living anywhere in Southern California is a huge, huge benefit when it comes to weather. In fact, that's one of the main draws for people to move to and live in and stay in the Southern California area. And Claremont is no exception. However, there's one really cool thing about Claremont that a lot of other towns don't have. And that is we are a foothill community. And while we get to enjoy a very mild uh, Mediterranean style climate, we also have the mountains right behind us. And actually Mount Baldy, which is a peak that reaches almost 6,000 feet, is only about 30 minutes away from downtown Claremont. So if you're someone who enjoys snow activities, hiking, trails, or just nature, this is a great, great median between the cool, mild California climate and also the snow fun activities that we have in the mountains. Of course, if you're not familiar with Mediterranean climate, you might not know what this means. So Mediterranean climates typically are warm and dry in the summertime and usually average temperatures in the summer range between 85 and 90 degrees. There can be some times where we get up into the triple digits, but if we do get up into the triple digits, it's usually for a span of time, usually no more than about a week, and it's in the low triple digits. Most structures, homes, and businesses in Southern California do have air conditioning standards. So if you're moving from a place from the Northwest or maybe back East and you, not everything is air conditioned there, that's not the case here in Claremont. So we are well equipped to handle the hotter, drier summers. And of course, winters in Claremont are great. We usually don't get much below about 50 degrees and we don't get a whole lot of precipitation. However, that really does vary based on the year. We have El Nino winters and La Nina winters, and I'm not a meteorologist, so I'm not gonna get into weather patterns here, but basically one is a cooler, drier winter, and the other is a warmer, wetter winter, and they just change all the time. So we do get some rain, but after all, we're not that far from the desert, so we don't get a whole lot of precipitation. Another great thing about our mild weather patterns is that we don't get a whole lot of extreme weather events. So we don't really have hurricanes, we don't have tornadoes. We do get heavy rainstorms, but those are pretty, pretty rare. So flooding is not typically a concern. And we only get snow at the really, really high elevations. Like I said, Mount Baldy, usually 4,000 feet or above. So Claremont itself doesn't really see any snow. So it's pretty even keeled and it's a pretty mild weather setting. Let's move on to pro number two, the small town charm. And I have to say, I've lived in Claremont for over 10 years now and I've grown up in this area and that is one of the things that people love the most about Claremont. And when I talk to clients, that's one of the top reasons that people want to set down roots in Claremont. Claremont's not a very big town. In fact, it's only about eight or nine miles wide from east to west, and it's not very tall north to south. We only have two exits off the major freeways around us, and it just has that charm to it. The population's about 35,000, which for a suburb of LA is really, really small. And this is definitely one of those towns that feels like you kind of know everyone. This small town atmosphere is definitely enhanced by our bike friendly roadways, our pedestrian friendly downtown area, and what we all know and love and call the village. The village is a wonderful area, kind of the older portion of Claremont that has a lot of shops, boutiques, restaurants, bars, entertainment, and it's very, very walk friendly. In fact, there's not a whole lot of parking. And for that reason, it really is best experienced on foot. And a lot of people like to take their bikes down to downtown Claremont, down to the village, and then walk around from there. And it definitely has that small charm feel. In fact, a lot of people say that it reminds them of a small East Coast college town. And in fact, there's a couple different reasons for that, which I'll share later on in this video. And the Claremont Village creates kind of a, a local gathering spot and it really fosters a sense of community where a lot of events take place. Claremont also has a focus on its historical ties. And there's a whole nonprofit organization called Claremont Heritage that specializes in preserving our historical roots. And that's not just in the form of our historic structures and houses and other buildings, but it's also the character and the history of Claremont of what made Claremont a beautiful town that it is today. And all of this contributes to the wonderful small town charming feeling that you get in this city. 
And this one takes us to pro number three of Claremont, and it's the educational focus of this town. Remember a little bit ago how I said that Claremont feels kind of like a small college town from back east? And that's because we are a small college town. In Claremont, we have seven colleges, and they've been dubbed the Claremont Colleges. And these colleges are all liberal arts colleges, business colleges, and we do have some science colleges as well, and they definitely contribute to the feeling of Claremont. The Claremont Colleges have been around since the early 1900s, and some even before that. So those also contribute to the rich history that is Claremont, and also the rich academic history of these longtime institutions. But it's not just the Claremont Colleges that are a focus of education. We also have a wonderful public school system with highly accomplished and highly rated public schools such as Condon Elementary, El Roble Middle School, and Claremont High School. We also have the Webb Schools, which is a high level private school where students actually live on campus. And it's a great setup school for the Claremont Colleges. So if you're serious about education or you're serious about your children's education, Claremont is a phenomenal town for that. And of course, the presence of seven different colleges in our small town really bring a fun, youthful vibe to the community. Now, some people think that college towns are party towns, and I can assure you that Claremont would not be classified as that. These colleges are on the upper echelon and they continually rank in the top colleges in the United States and if not the world. So while we do have a young hip vibe from all the college students, it's also very academically focused. And this takes us to pro number four, outdoor recreation. And again, this kind of goes hand in hand with our mild, wonderful climate that we have. One of the main features is Claremont Hills Wilderness Park. And this gives not only residents, but also guests access to over 2,000 acres of untouched wildlands, including trails that you can walk, hike, bike, or even run. And of course, if you like to walk dogs, it's a great spot to let the dogs run around. And Claremont Hills Wilderness Park also offers some of the best panoramic views of the San Gabriel Valley and the Inland Empire. It truly is unbeatable. The city of Claremont has a commitment to preserving green space. And even though that's the biggest park we have, we have tons of much smaller parks all throughout the city. And the open space feeling is one of those things that gives Claremont a true connection to nature. And that's often another one of the biggest things I hear from clients and friends in the community is they, they love the sense of community in nature and open space that Claremont provides. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, the proximity to our beautiful San Gabriel Mountains is second to none. As a foothill community, we are nestled up right at the base of the San Gabriel Mountains, and the San Gabriel Mountains offer world-class road cycling, snow activities, hiking, and just wonderful views. And in fact, sometimes people are amazed that you can go from the beach at one end of our county all the way to the mountains at the other end. And in fact, we're one of the few places where you can go to the beach, the desert, and the snow all in the same day. It is a really, really busy day, but you can do it, and it's amazing. And pro number five, our arts and culture scene. Claremont is a hub for local art. And in fact, in the 1940s and 50s and into the 60s, Claremont was an artist's getaway. Many, many of the artists that practiced in Pasadena, downtown Los Angeles, and much more closer to the Los Angeles metropolitan area actually took vacation here in Claremont. It was their getaway. It was their escape from the hustle and bustle. And because of that, we have a lot of notable arts and architecture around the Claremont area. When it comes to architecture, we have a house designed by Richard Neutra, we have a green and green, we have multiple Helen Wren design homes, Cryley McDowell homes that feature mid-century modern styling and post and beam, and it goes on and on. And the Claremont Village hosts events usually every week or every month that are related and strongly tied to the arts. For instance, we have Art Walk, which usually takes once a month, which features local art from local citizens and our community and puts it on display for everyone to enjoy. We also have Friday Nights Live in the summer, and that focuses on local music artists and letting them display their talents throughout multiple different parts of the community all on the same night. So it's kind of like a mini music festival, but every week during the summer. And when it comes to culture, again, our seven Claremont colleges contribute greatly to some of the different types of cultures and communities that we see here in Claremont. It does bring people from all over the United States and in fact, all over the world to enjoy this beautiful, beautiful setting. So those were the five pros of Claremont, but not everything is perfect. And now I'm gonna share with you five cons of living in Claremont and this area.
Of course, the first con is the cost of living. And I don't just mean houses, but I mean in general. Everyone knows that living in California, and especially Southern California, is not cheap. And Claremont is no exception to that. Housing in Claremont is expensive, and it definitely is much higher than the national average. And while you can still find some condos for under 600,000 and some even in the $500,000 range, most of the time, your single family detached homes are gonna run between 800,000 and a million on average. And if you want something a little bit larger, over 2,000 square feet or over 3,000 square feet, you're certainly gonna be going up into that million to $1.1 million range. And if you're a luxury buyer, it's not that difficult to spend two to three million. Right now, we have a listing that tops over $5 million here in Claremont. Now, it is an exquisite listing and that is rare, but we do have those types of homes. Rent is another thing that is not super affordable. In fact, I just rented a two bedroom, three bathroom condo, about 1,500 square feet in a nice part of Claremont, but it did cost that $2,850 per month and the security deposit was $3,500. So while not super expensive, it's not necessarily cheap either. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to consider that if you're moving to the area. Other costs of living like utilities insurance are high as well. Claremont does have notably high water. We have a private water supplier called Golden State Water Company, and it's not provided by our municipality. So our water is known to be a little bit more expensive here in Claremont than some of the other surrounding cities. One of the good things is that our property insurance is not too bad. Because of our mild climate, because we don't have crazy natural disasters, property insurance isn't too crazy. And for your average single family residential home detached, you're probably looking between 1,500 a year and 2,000 a year for insurance. But of course that varies by your insurance provider, the age of the home, and a ton of other different variables. Auto insurance can be expensive because we do live in a big city. We are considered living in a suburb of Los Angeles. So depending on your age and make of your car, that can get expensive as well. But one thing to consider is that we do have a very high quality of living. So you do kind of get what you pay for. And on to con number two, we have a limited nightlife and entertainment. And that kind of has to do because we have this small town feel. And if you've ever spent time in a small town, you've probably noticed that things kind of tend to shut down early. Maybe shops are closed on Sundays and Mondays. There's no bars or clubs that are open late. And that's just kind of part of it. We do have a couple spots here in Claremont that are open until 1 and 2 a.m., especially on the weekends. However, it is not rare for people to come to town and if it's nine or 10 o'clock on a weekday night, your options of recreation are pretty limited. While the Claremont Village does offer a robust choice of pubs and restaurants and bars, there isn't a whole lot of dedicated nightlife. So nightclubs and bars open late just aren't that common. So if you are seeking a better nightlife scene, you might have to go outside of the Claremont to other surrounding cities to get that. This takes me to con number three, job opportunities. Claremont's job opportunities and job market is definitely influenced by its small town size and community feel. While the Claremont Colleges are a huge employer and one of the larger ones in the area, and we do have local businesses to support the infrastructure here in Claremont, we don't have a whole lot of major companies and we don't have high rise buildings to have a bunch of office spaces. And most of our operations are kind of sole proprietorships, mom and pops, or the small business variety. So if you're looking for job opportunity, this might not be the best place to come. And if you do really wanna to move to Claremont, it's really good to secure a job beforehand. Now, the good thing about Claremont is that you can travel. We have trains into downtown LA. We're not that far from the Inland Empire and we're about a 45 minute drive to Pasadena, which is a bigger city. So if you're really committed to living in Claremont, you can look elsewhere for jobs and commute. However, if you are thinking about commuting for your job, it's important to remember traffic. And yes, we do have LA traffic around here. Depending on the time and the day and which direction you're going, traffic can be brutal. However, if it's something that you're prepared for, there's other ways to mitigate. You can carpool. Like I mentioned, you can take the train. We have the gold line coming to Claremont, which is a light rail that kind of goes right down the median of a major freeway, and that can really alleviate some of your commute time. 
And this takes me to con number four. And this one is an interesting one. And it's a big reason that people want to stay away from the West Coast, earthquake risk. Now I'm a lifelong West Coaster. I lived in LA and the LA County area my entire life born and raised. And while earthquakes are a very real and common thing, a significant earthquake is not that common. Southern California is located along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a hotbed for tectonic and seismic activity. However, like I mentioned, I've been here my whole life and I can only really remember about three or four really significant earthquakes. We did have the major earthquake in 1994 in Northridge that did cause a lot of destruction and damage. However, those aren't super common. On top of that, California is prepared. A lot of our building and architectural standards specifically prepare for earthquake preparedness. Many homes are seismically retrofitted, which means that they have been uh, augmented or modified to be prepared for earthquakes and seismic activities. We take extra precautions in making sure our water heaters are strapped to the wall. So in the event of a seismic activity, we don't have any gas leaks or potentials for explosions with those devices. And overall, we've come to learn and adapt to the possibility of an earthquake at any time. Additionally, it is really easy to obtain earthquake insurance, which is a specialized insurance, kind of like flood insurance, that goes along with your home insurance policy. Earthquake insurance varies heavily in pricing based on the type of structure you have, but it is one added benefit that you can add to give you some peace of mind in the event that we do have a major earthquake. This takes me to con number five, potential lack of diversity. Even though Claremont has the seven colleges, it still is a small town and there's just not a lot of people. We are a suburb of Los Angeles and so some people might feel like that we have a little bit less diversity than a more urban center, which is true. And while Claremont is a welcoming community and it definitely welcomes people from all walks of life and different communities, people might sense that there's a little bit of lack of diversity, especially in comparison to more major urban centers. But a lot of this just comes down to numbers and demographics. If you take a town like Los Angeles with millions of people, and then you take a town like Claremont with tens of thousands of people, there's just bound to be a little bit less diversity in this area. And because of this, this could impact some cultural options like dining and entertainment. If you're looking for very, very specific dining options or very specific entertainment options that are suitable to one culture, uh, you may not be able to find them here in Claremont. However, the good news is, is it's probably not far away from Claremont. Because LA County is made up of over 10 million people, we have all sorts of different cultures in all of our different suburbs and cities. So if you are looking for a specific grocery store or a specific style of entertainment or music, chances are it's a driving distance away. There you have it, five pros and cons about living in and around the Claremont area. I hope this video was useful to you and comment down below. What do you think about these five pros and cons? What do you think is the biggest pro and what do you think is the biggest con? I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in learning more about Claremont and Claremont real estate, click on this video right over here and I'll see you on the next one.